This video covers the step-by-step -step instructions of how to assemble the disc launcher so you can go from this to this to this. First, we need to find the DC motor and our circular adhesive foam. Next, peel it off the paper backing and stick it down over the DC motor shaft. Peel the second paper backing off the foam, then locate the wood launcher piece and slide the motor shaft through the center hole in the back of the launcher. Now it's important you make sure the motor shaft is centered in the hole and that no blue foam is visible from the front of the launcher, otherwise your flywheel just won't be properly aligned. Find your flywheel and stretch your largest rubber band over the flywheel so it sits flat in the outer groove. Then slide your flywheel onto the motor shaft which should be sticking out of the front of your launcher. Make sure to press the flywheel and the DC motor together. Just a pro tip, the harder you press those together the stronger the fit will be. In engineering, when you smush a shaft into a hole like that, we call it a press fit. Then flip your launcher over and slide the red motor tube over the motor body. The two will be held in place by the adhesive foam. Next, grab your battery pack and pull out the clear plastic tab. So now electrons can flow through those wires once we turn it on. Then grab the rectangular adhesive foam and peel it off the paper backing. And stick it to the side of the battery pack that has the on and off switch and peel off the other paper backing. Then stick the battery pack to the back of the launcher so the on off switch is visible through the rectangular opening from the front. Then flip the launcher back over and connect the wires of the battery pack to the wires on the DC motor. Make sure you connect the red wire to the red wire and the black wire to the black wire. Then find the yellow foam guardrail, then peel and stick it to the matching edge shape on the launcher. Then turn your switch to the on position and make sure your flywheel is spinning in the same direction the arrow on the wood is pointing. Another pro tip, you can actually switch the direction of a DC motor just by switching the wire connection. So if your motor is accidentally spinning backwards, it probably means that you have your wire connection swapped. Remember, red goes with red, black goes with black. Now for a quick test. As an engineer, you like to test as you go along. So grab a couple of your red discs and turn the launcher on. Then place one of your discs onto the dotted circle. Then push it towards the flywheel until it gets pinched in between the rubber band and the guardrail and let it rip. Now find the small yellow wood piece, then peel and stick it to the matching shape on the wood launcher. Grab a bolt and the dark blue trigger bar, then slide the bolt through the largest hole in the trigger bar and the matching hole in the wood launcher. Then from the back, screw a nut onto the bolt until you have a small gap in between the nut and the back of the wood launcher. That gap is important because it allows the trigger bar to move under the force of your finger. And here's another pro tip for building. If you have two nuts, you can actually make them a locking nut. So you take the extra one that we included in the kit and you just twist it into the back of the other nut and now they're both locked into place and yet the trigger bar could still rotate freely. Next, grab the smallest of the three rubber bands and loop it through the smallest hole in the trigger bar. It should pop out the back of the wood launcher. Then loop both sides of the rubber band around the notch on the right side of the wood launcher. Next, slide the two wooden rectangular pieces into the parallel slits into the wood launcher. Then from the back of the launcher, hook two white O-rings over the tips of the wooden rectangular pieces. This is what holds them nice and snugly in place. Then find the dark blue disc tube and slide it in between the two rectangular pieces. Make sure the tube sits in the two cutouts in the wood pieces. That way there's a gap underneath the tube. Then stretch the medium sized rubber band around the dark blue disc tube, making sure the rubber band sits in the notches of the two wood pieces. Then grab one of the plastic tabs and slide it in between the rubber band and the tube. It should sit in the same notches that the rubber band is sitting on. The tab should also be on the same side of the tube as the on-off switch. Then grab a couple of your red discs and drop them into the disc tube, making sure the frisbees aren't upside down. So now that it's fully assembled, you can see that as you push on the blue trigger bar, it in turn pushes only one disc out the bottom of the disc tube, at which point the rubber band on the flywheel grabs the disc and pinches it into the foam guardrail. That causes the disc to spin and shoot forward out of the launcher. Then what's cool is that when you release the trigger bar, the next disc automatically drops down into the perfect position to be pushed out 
for your follow-up shot out of the launcher. Oh, and if you're watching this and you haven't yet ordered your build box subscription from Crunch Labs, then what the heck are you waiting for? Visit crunchlabs.com with the parent, and once you're there, you can learn more about how it all works. Thanks for watching.